Welcome to our crash course, Medical Missionary Training. We pray that you will learn a lot from the few minutes that we will here discuss the medical missionary work and how you can be a part of this great work and to do your part to quicken your Savior's coming. But before I go into the medical missionary training course, let us pray. Most righteous and holy God, we want to thank you for the privilege that we have to come before your presence in such a time as this. Open our hearts and our minds to accept your truth and to do your work because we are called to be a part of this great work so that your people may be saved. Sanctify us and keep us and walk with us throughout this earth, the length and breadth of this earth. And sanctify us so that we will be a part of the number that will go home with you when you shall come is my prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I want to welcome you all to this, our medical missionary training. And the first thing I want to talk to you about is on the basis of the scripture of Matthew 10 verse 8. Matthew 10 verse 8 says, Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely he have received, freely give. Now what is that text saying to us? The text, the text is basically a commission for us, a work that we are called to do. We are called to heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and even though we may not raise the physically dead as it was in the time of Christ, we are all called upon to raise the spiritually dead as well as the mentally dead. Understand what I mean? Persons can be alive physically, but the brain is dead mentally because another entity or force has captivated that brain. They are suffering from depression, uh, other sicknesses that are like Alzheimer's. So God has given us the work of healing that we can be a part of if we only connect to the right source, Jesus Christ. So he has given us a commission to heal the sick and all these things. And we have the benefit of doing this great work using the simple things that God has placed within our midst. So, is this a work for only some persons? Is this a work for only some church members? The Bible tells us that we are commissioned. And we are to go ye in all the world. The Bible also points us to Jesus, who is able to take away all our sin and to heal us from all our diseases. Now, in the spirit of prophecy, we read, We have come to a time when every member of the church should take hold of medical missionary work. The world is a laser house filled with victims of both physical and spiritual disease. Everywhere, people are perishing for a lack of knowledge of the truths that have been committed to us. The members of the church are in need of an awakening that they may realize their responsibility to impart these truths those who have been enlightened by the truth are to be light bearers to the world. And this is from Testimonies to the Church, Volume 7, page 62, paragraph 1. So this great medical missionary work, it is not just for some persons. It is for every member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Psalms 103, verses 1 to 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. 
God is the one who heals us from all our diseases. The medical missionary is only working for the master healer. We cannot heal anyone. God is the one who heals. And he gives us the natural things that we can use to allow healing to take place. In 3 John verse 2, the Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospered. So God wants us to have good health. He wants us to be prosperous in health even as our soul prospered. However, we have to be careful when we are talking about the medical missionary work because just as our God has his way of healing, there is also a counterfeit way of healing. In the Spirit of Prophecy, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 443, it says, There are many ways of practicing the healing heart, but there is only one way that heaven approves. God's remedies are the simple agencies of nature that will not tax or debilitate the system through their powerful properties. Pure air and water, cleanliness, a proper diet, purity of life, and a firm trust in God are remedies for the want of which thousands are dying. Fresh air, exercise, Pure water and clean, sweet premises are within the reach of all. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 443. Evangelism would be twice as successful if we do the medical missionary work. And I read another quotation. Some utterly fail to realize the importance of missionaries being also medical missionaries. A gospel minister will be twice as successful in his work if he understands how to treat disease. A minister, and we have to take this in hand, you know, note it very carefully. What the prophet of the Lord says about this great work. She says, a minister of the gospel who is also a medical missionary who can cure physical ailments is a much more efficient worker than one who cannot do this. His work as a minister of the gospel is much more complete so here she is telling us that a person who is doing missionary work would be twice as effective if they knew the medical missionary work and could use the things that the Lord gave us or has given us to help persons who are suffering from disease. Is the medical missionary work important, especially in this time? Yes, it is. It has always been important but especially for such a time as this. We have always had sick, pe sick people because sin has caused sickness to be upon this earth. What is the first thing that every medical missionary needs to do? Every medical missionary person needs to have a right concept or understanding of God. You cannot give what you don't have. You should constantly study the word of God so that you will understand his bidding, his work, so that you will be as Moses, where Moses, the Bible talks of him as a man after his own heart. God says that. God does not desire his people to suffer an hour pain. It is not God's will for this. Sickness and disease is a result of violating the laws of health and the laws of Ten Commandments, the laws that govern man's existence. Many disregard the principles of health by their habits of eating, drinking, and dressing. So we violate by how we eat, how we drink, how we dress. And we can even just look at Genesis 
where it showed that the eating part of it when the serpent beguiled Eve and she took off the forbidden fruit and ate and even after their sin and sewed fig leaves on their bodies not covering themselves properly. So we see just principles of these things being etched out from in the beginning of the Bible. There are indeed 14 laws of health. Correct diet, daily exercise, copious or proper water drinking, daily sunshine, trust in God, taking in our fresh air, nightly rest and also resting on God's seventh day Sabbath, temperance, avoiding the things that are bad for you, and doing the things that are good for you in moderation, having an attitude of gratitude, correct posture, cleanliness, service to others, proper dressing, proper voice culture, sickness and suffering and death are works of an antagonistic power. Satan is the destroyer. God is the restorer. And we find that in Ministry of Healing, page 113. The words spoken to Israel are true today for those who want to recover health of body or health of soul. And in Exodus 15, verse 26, we read, I am the Lord that healeth thee. So God wants to heal his people. But do we want to be healed? This medical missionary work, the teaching or the learning of it has its foundation in the Bible, the spirit of prophecy, and also in good scientific literature. God wants us to know how to properly take care of our bodies. A sickly body cannot praise God as it would if the body was well. The use of drugs, a practice that is laying the foundation of a vast amount of disease and of even more serious evils is the free use of poisonous drugs. When attacked by a disease, many will not take the trouble to search out the cause of their illness. And we can look at Proverbs 26 verse 2, the latter section where it says that the curse causeless shall not come. And we can also take a look at Job where Job says what I didn't know I search out. So I'm continuing the quotation from the Ministry of Healing, page 126, where she says, Their chief anxiety is to rid themselves of pain and inconvenience. So they resort to patent nostrums of whose real properties they know little, or they apply to a physician for some remedy to counteract the result of their misdoing. But with no thought of making a change in their unhealthful habits. If immediate benefit is not realized, another medicine is tried and then another. Thus, the evil continues. Ministry of Healing, page 126. Now, why did Sister White, Ellen White, the prophet of the Lord, cause this an evil? Because she says, thus, the evil continues. Could the taking of these poisonous nostrums be evil? I'm not saying anything. Continuing to read. The sick are in a hurry to get well, and the friends of the sick are impatient. They will have medicine, and if they do not feel that powerful influence upon their systems, their erroneous views lead them to think, should feel, they impatiently change for another physician. The change often increases the evil. They go through a course of medicine equally as dangerous as the first. And this is from the book by same prophet, Ellen Wine, the prophet of the Lord, pen of inspiration directly from the Lord himself, How to Live, pages 3 and 62. Another quotation, By the use of poisonous drugs, many bring upon themselves lifelong illness and many lives are lost that might be saved by the use of natural methods of healing. The poisons contained in many so-called remedies create habits and appetites that mean ruin to both soul and body. 
Many of the popular nostrums called patent medicines and even some of the drugs dispensed by, by physicians act a part in laying the foundation of the liquor habit, the hopium habit, the morphine habit that are so terrible a curse to society. Ministry of Healing, page 126 and 127. Drugs given to stupefy, whatever they may be, derange the nervous system. From the book How to Live, pages 3 and 57. Remember, these quotations are not my words. They are from the pen of inspiration given to the prophet Ellen White by the Lord himself. And it is better for us to be obedient than to present a sacrifice. The Lord is here speaking to us. And the things that we do will tell where our health of body, mind and soul will last. God wants us to have health. It is not God's will for us to be sick. We have that choice. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Now, I'm going to speak to you just a little on sunshine. And I'm going to sing a song, although I don't have that great singing voice. There is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright. So that's a little piece I'm going to leave with you. <laughs> so how important is the sunlight? We can look at Genesis 1 verses 3 and 16 that talks about the sunlight. In Genesis 1 verse 3 we read, Let there be light. And there was light. And then we're going to look at 16 where the Bible talks about the sunshine. The sun that he gave as light. Sick people need to be exposed to the direct rays of the sun to promote healing in the body. This is not only good for the physical body, but it's also good for the mental state as well as for keeping your emotional state intact. In Psalm 74 verse 16, the, the Bible tells us, The day is thine, the night is thine, thou has prepared the light and the sun. So God gave us the light, he gave us the sun, and it is for our healing. Sunlight is one of nature's most healing agents. Testimonies, volume 2, page 2, 531. God has given us the sunshine, and it is our privilege to use the sun to allow healing to take place. Did you know that if you do not receive the vitamin D from the sunshine, you will not be able to get many vitamins into your body? Calcium needs vitamin D to go inside your body and without calcium, some of the other vitamins cannot come inside the body because these vitamins piggyback on the calcium to go inside your body. So next time when you are hiding from the sun, remember that you are putting yourself at risk in not accumulating the vitamin D in your body so that your calcium can be taken into the body and the other vitamins that need to go inside your body will also be able to go in so that you will receive the benefits of the vitamins and the minerals that are so needed to keep us healthy in such a time as this. So there you have it. We thank you for watching a Treasures for Life ministry video. We hope you were blessed. Please like, subscribe, and if you have a question, please leave a comment in our comment box. And as always, Maranatha, Jesus is coming soon. God bless and keep you and read and know how to take care of your body. 
because God has given us a wonderful, fearfully made body that can heal itself. God bless.